Greetings, loved ones. Today, we would like to share with you information that can help you recognize signs and symptoms of complex trauma in your child and offer recommendations for what you can do to help your child heal. So help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell. And please, please share these messages with others. You never know. You could save a life. Complex trauma describes both children's exposure to traumatic events and the wide-ranging long-term impact of this exposure. These events are severe, persuasive, and often interpersonal, such as abuse or profound neglect. They usually begin early in life. They may disrupt many aspects of the child's development, and they may interfere with the child's ability to form secure attachment bonds. Many aspects of a child's healthy physical and mental development, these rely on this primary source of safety and stability. So what is it like to be a child with complex trauma? We all have an internal alarm system to warn us of danger and prepare us to respond. You know, the fight, flight, or freeze responses prepare us to fight off an attack, fleeing if fighting doesn't seem possible, or freeze if we can neither fight nor flee. And this response is something that has been built into the human brain and body for thousands of years. So when we perceive danger, this internal alarm system turns on, and when the danger passes, the alarm system shuts down. Children with complex trauma often have overactive alarm systems, where their alarm system just goes haywire. These children may jump at any loud noise or feel their heart pounding when they see one child shove another on the playground. They might wake up from sleep every time a dog barks in the neighborhood. They're always on the lookout for danger. Often they think safe situations are dangerous. They have false alarms when things remind them of traumatic events, and we call these trauma reminders. So what are reactions to reminders? Trauma reminders, they may make a child think about or relive a frightening event from the past. Trauma reminders, some people may call those triggers, can be places, sounds, smells, tastes, colors, textures, words, feelings, and even other people. Children can have trauma reminders many times a day. They can be reminded of traumas that happened even before they could understand or talk about them. A child may react to a trauma reminder without being aware of the reminder, and parents and caregivers may not be aware of them either. So here are some common trauma reminders for children with complex traumas. Ketchup. This reminds a child of the blood they saw when their father hit their brother. A book dropping off a desk. This reminds a child of gunshots in their neighborhood. Packing suitcases reminds a child of the day he was taken from his mother's home and placed in foster care. Arguing takes a child back to seeing her father beat her mother. And feeling alone and overwhelmed reminds a child of how she felt while being sexually abused. So how might complex trauma affect the way your child sees the world? You know, world views change because of complex trauma in a child and they connect to other people. So some children with a complex trauma history might do the following things. They might believe the world is and will always be an unsafe place. They may have trouble depending on a caregiver or other adults such as teachers or police officers to keep them safe. They have trouble building and maintaining healthy relationships with others and they approach relationships with suspicion and distrust. They may overreact or feel completely betrayed by a minor understanding or squabble with a friend. And they may respond negatively to seemingly positive events such as praise, intimacy, or feelings of peace. A child who lacks experience of and memory for happy and safe times may not understand or be comfortable with such feelings. So how does complex trauma change your child's thinking? A child with a complex trauma history might have trouble developing skills and learning due to the amount of mental energy being spent reacting to a trauma reminder. They may have trouble focusing, organizing, and processing information, and this might make the child seem to be ignoring a caregiver or teacher who has to 
repeat requests or instructions to get a response. Your child may seem distracted because he, he is trying to predict or avoid the next bad thing that will happen. And your child may seem very nervous, emotionally intense, or have a hair trigger response. Frequently, they may be flooded by overwhelming and unbearable emotions. And they may seem shut down or numb and unable to experience or express any emotions. So part of taking care of your child is taking care of yourself first. You know, we often take care of others and forget to take care of ourselves. But when you're, when you're, um, when your well is empty, you have no more to give. So it's important that you take care of yourself. So you need to be aware of your own feelings and reactions. How are you coping? This affects how you are able to help your child. Children often take their cues about how to react from the important adults around them, using these adults as a model for their own feelings and behaviors. So if you're running around stressed out and crazy, that may be how they respond. If you're sad or upset, you know, that's okay. But show your child through words and actions that even when you're upset, you can still manage your feelings and you can still take care of them. Take care of yourself as best you can and accept help from those around you. It's really important that we learn to accept help from others. Taking care of yourself is an important part of taking care of your child. So try to make sure you get enough rest and exercise. Take some time away from your child care responsibilities. And keep other family members and important adults, such as child care and preschool providers, teachers, coaches, clergy, and youth leaders. Keep them informed of what your child is experiencing. Partner with them to support your child by helping them to understand the connection between traumas and your child's feelings and behaviors. And don't hesitate to seek professional support. I want to say something. A lot of people here think that going to a therapist or a counselor is a sign of weakness. In reality, it's a sign of strength because if you were, had, were diagnosed with cancer, you wouldn't say, oh, well, I'm not going to do chemotherapy because it's going to make me look weak. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. So make sure you take care of yourself. And if you need counseling, get it. That's something that a strong person does. Parents and caregivers, you know, you sometimes feel as though you should, you have to handle everything on your own, but experiencing repeated traumas can be extraordinarily painful, even overwhelming and doesn't necessarily get better on its own. So it makes total sense to seek advice, to seek guidance and support of someone who knows about trauma and can help you and your child. So what else can you do to help your child heal from complex trauma? Keep to a daily routine. That's really important that their boundaries, their world remains safe as much as you can so that your child knows what to expect. Children, those are the buses on the road. They're beeping in case people want to get on the bus. And now there's another one. Children are reassured and comforted when things are predictable and familiar. And the things you can do is you can listen to their words and watch their behaviors. While some children can tell you what they're experiencing, others won't want to talk about it, won't know what they are feeling, or they can't express it in words. So listen to what your child is showing and telling you in words, behaviors, physical complaints like headaches and stomach aches. And praise your child for making good choices, cooperating, and handling things well. Set reasonable and consistent limits and give clear expectations. You know, holding children accountable, especially children who have experienced traumas, helps them to feel in control and successful. And make sure you use simple language and watch your child's reaction when you're explaining what has happened or talking about what happened. Follow your child's cues as to how much to say and what not to say and don't get frustrated if they ask you to tell you tell them again. Older children might get quiet and seem not to want to discuss things, even though they want to know. And reassure your child when you leave them. Let them know that when you will be back and when you'll be together. And after an incident where your child has reacted to a trauma reminder or other upset, they might be clingy or have trouble separating or be more fearful. If you tell your child, for example, I'm going to pick you up right after school, do your best to stick to that. Don't be late. 
And it's best to be honest rather than to tell them what they want to hear. You also need to watch for trauma-related reminders or triggers that are hard for your child. If she gets overly upset or angry when seeing people who hurt or neglected her, or when hearing adults talk about what happened, she may need to learn how to cope with painful events and triggers. Respond to your child rather than react. This is something that we all need to learn in life. You know, children often act out when they're faced with stressful situations. So what seems like a tantrum or a rude demand may be a reaction to a trauma reminder. So before you jump in and punish, think about the trauma first. Take some time to explore and understand the roots of the behavior. And advocate for your child within the school. Discuss what the school can do to support her. Understand potential trauma reminders and triggers such as fire alarms, offering counseling or accommodations. And keep an eye out as your child gets older for new situations that stir up trauma reactions. Be prepared for your child to revisit the traumas and if you need to, seek professional support. Micah 6.8 says he has showed you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to do justice, love mercy and walk humbly with your God. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, seek help. If you know of a child or other person who's suffering violence, tell the authorities. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about trauma and intimate partner violence. Until then, God bless you.